Welcome to Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. I'm Jason Falls, your host. Today on the program, we are going to talk social media, but probably in a context that many of you aren't used to thinking about that topic with, consumer insights. Mining social media conversations for the types of information you might expect from focus groups or research. We're going to pick the brain of Todd Grossman, who is the Chief Adoption Officer for TalkWalker. That platform is one of the top social analytics and market insights platforms out there. Uh, specifically focused on mining those social conversations for brands. Todd moved into his current role earlier this year after being CEO for the Americas for the company since 2015. Prior to that, he was in leadership at Precise Media and spent a good long tenure at PR Newswire and Multiview, both of which I believe were acquired by Cision along the way. So his background in the media insights world is vast. Get out your pens and papers and notepads and stuff. We're going to learn some stuff today on the show. He's going to share some insights on social media with us and talk about how you can use social data to make better business decisions. I've also got some new influencer marketing data to discuss with you. And for those of you who are interested in influencer marketing specifically, some big news about an event hit the Internet this morning. So we'll talk a little bit about that on the show today, too. All of that and more is coming up on Digging Deeper. Before we get to that, however, I want to talk to you about podcasts. Some of you are joining us on the live stream this morning. Thank you for doing so. In fact, just looking over to make sure the plumbing on the internet is working, and it appears the plumbing is working, and that's always a good thing for us. So, but uh, if you are joining us on the live stream this morning, thank you for doing so. But many of you are listening to the recording of this on the Digging Deeper podcast on demand wherever you get your podcasts. Did you know that if you do, you are one of over 100 million Americans each month that listen to podcasts? For your business or if you're at an agency or client's business, ignoring podcasts as a method to reach an audience is not very smart. But podcasts are hard to find, hard to track. It's nearly impossible to find reliable audience size and demographic information to know which podcast to sponsor, to pitch for earned media and all that good stuff, right? Well, not anymore. Podchaser Pro is the professional version of Podchaser, a free tool that helps anyone find, manage, rate, and follow podcasts. Podchaser Pro, however, is the subscription upgrade that gives you access to that critical audience information you need for media planning and buying or public relations or influencer outreach to podcasts. You find a podcast, click on the Pro tab and see everything you need right there. If there's a piece of information you don't see or can't find, Podchaser Pro subscribers have a personal concierge. Just ask them to go find it, and within a day or two, they get back to you. I've used Podchaser Pro to make recommendations for media buys and sponsorships to clients. I've also used it to prioritize podcasts for pitching guests and trying to be a part of the show itself. It's a must-have tool for finding, prioritizing, targeting, and tracking podcasts for your business or clients. If your brand or agency would like to know more, go to podchaserpro.com slash falls, sign up there and make your podcast outreach and media planning more effective. That's podchaserpro.com slash falls. All right. What's next? I got to scroll down on the script to see what's next. I don't actually do all this from memory. Uh, gang, if you are dialing into the live broadcast on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, you can jump in the comments section there and uh, say hello. I saw Christoph Trapp jump in here on YouTube and say the plumbing is working. So verifying that everything is working. I looked over on LinkedIn, it's working too. I see some of those little bubbles coming up where people are, are commenting. So I, I know a few more of you are going to be jumping in. But what you can do if you are on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, jump in the comments, say hello, or at reply on the Twitter video to ask questions and interact with us here on the show. If you have questions for Todd or myself as we go through the conversation, jump in and ask. I'll do my best to surface that question so we can answer as we go along. All right. It's time for me to stop babbling and actually get to the reason we're here today, and that's to learn from someone other than me. Uh, and uh, it's time to talk about the good stuff. Uh, Todd Grossman is the chief adoption officer at TalkWalker, and he's here to get us smarter about social media insights and the latest trends in the space. Good morning, Todd. Welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Good morning, Jason. It's good to see you on screen, but I really wish I was in Lexington right next to you. It's been a long time since May. 
It has been. We had a, a nice couple of days running around the bourbon trail and having some drinks and experiencing the bluegrass. It was great to have you here, but uh, I, I'm very happy to have you on the program so we can share your knowledge with all the other people. It's just not just me, you and a couple of guys. So great to see you. Um, so I guess we should start off with a level set for everyone. Social listening is something I think most people in our audience understand, but I don't know if most businesses or brands really know what social listening can do. When you describe what Talkwalker does for brands, how do you explain that? So in the early times, I would say that uh, social listening, we, we would call it uh, social data intelligence. And that was a combination of listening, monitoring, and then getting some insights and understanding demographic data, influencer data, uh, sure voice data, a little bit of vanity metrics data there, but things have really involved from traditional monitoring and social intelligence. And where, where Talkwalker has really excelled in the category that we're in right now is consumer intelligence. And that involves social listening and market intelligence and customer intelligence. But this whole consumer intelligence allows someone now to really understand the voice of the customer. And, and that's really important in understanding the, the trends out there and what we're seeing um, and, and what's being said and combining other data sets in there to be able to get a holistic approach in, in getting that insight. And it's never been more exciting with all the technology out there and AI, which we are powered by, and what we can do, which ranges from, I, I love the podcast uh, that you mentioned there with Podchaser, uh, because now you can monitor podcasts um, in, in, with AI and images and the, the whole universe out there is just for listeners and, and people to, to take this information and do really good things with it. Yeah, I know that, um, you know, back in the day, um, you know, back in the days of, you know, Radiant 6 and Sysimos were the two more popular social media monitoring softwares of the day. This was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And that was really before the term social listening became more in vogue. The key selling point back then was to monitor mentions of your brand. The sales pitch was, how can you participate in the conversations if you don't know where the conversations are happening? Now, you could argue that brands weren't actually participating in the conversations back then, but the focus was more on customer service and kind of putting out fires, but the advent of matching up data sets, as you mentioned, and then using artificial intelligence, bringing in intelligent analysis of images and videos and podcast audio and things like that. Now, all of a sudden, it's a very different world than just monitoring to listen to what people are saying, right? It, it, it's a completely different world. And there's just so much out there. And there's so many different media platforms out there. And there's omni-channel engagement and, and marketing now and consumers are engaging with with social media so we really have to understand what's what's being said out there and i tell a lot of um customers that if if you're not or someone who's on the fence well should i be doing this or not if you're not doing this your your peer competitive companies are and you have to be in this space now there's just no other way that's true. One of the things I really like about what Talkwalker does is you guys publish um, some really interesting high level data to kind of show off you know, what you can find in, in your platform about. I think you've published something about the most loved brands and trends in social media and such. So what, what are some people talking about on the social media these days? What do we need to be paying attention to? Yeah, we did a really nice. Um, uh, we do this every year is looking at the social media trends. So for 2022, the, the, the number one trend that we saw, and I was really excited to see this, and I've been doing a lot more reading on it, is that TikTok will take over social media, leaving other platforms to adapt. And, and what I mean by that is that they're basically dominating with uh, personalized content. They had 3 billion downloads first ever next to the Facebook app. And now there's TikTok resumes with 3.4 million online. <laughs> However, 68% do not plan to use TikTok in 2021. There's only a, a month left and 30, 32% are interested in learning more. But this trend is definitely to go. That's that's one trend. Okay. TikTok disturbs me. And, and, and that's the, the platform where I feel like the grumpy old man saying, get off my lawn. Um, I just, I mean, I, I, it's engaging. And what I've told, you know, people who have asked me is to succeed on TikTok, you really have to just have fun. It's more of a, you know, fun, engaging, creative platform. I don't see it as a place where a lot of, you know, sort of sterile corporate 
businesses are going to have a lot of success. I also don't see it as a place where you would put a resume, but you know, unless you're a, your resume is I'm a TikTok creator, but you're saying that the trend is going to knock down those walls. Maybe the trend is definitely going to do that. And I'll give you an, uh, an old stodgy brand, the Washington <laughs> post. Okay. If you follow their TikTok page. They are doing amazing things right now and getting millions of engagement. They are making it so much fun, as you said, and that's what it's about. So you're seeing what they're doing and I, I just love it. And you'll see other brands slowly doing this. What, what else pops? Is there, is there another trend or two that pops there for you? Yeah. I'd like to tell you a couple, couple more, um, maturing influencer marketing will finally come to age. And this goes to your great book, which I absolutely love here <laughs> is that Influencer marketing, the influencers have finally grown up. This area now brands cannot sit back, especially during COVID times where people are just talking and, and buying online with all of this social selling that's simplifying a customer's journey. Brands really are, are, are getting in here and seeing the value of influencer marketing. And they could learn a lot more just by reading your book in terms of what's what's being said in the, in the trends there. So you were way ahead of the game when you were writing that book because... 2022, it's happening. I come up with a good idea every now and then. Uh, in in the in the meta grand scheme of things, it's about once every eight years. Um, so maybe Winfluence was my one for the for this decade. We'll see. Well, it's um, funny you said meta because yeah. the, the, the last trend that I'll just mention to you is metaverses will be the next consumer connection. That you know. I've been trying to get my head wrapped around what this metaverse looks like. And other than thinking about, you know, Fortnite and games, uh, which is part of it, um, I just can't get my head wrapped around what this is going to look like. And I don't think very many other people can either, because the way that I understand what's going to happen here is where we communicate with other people, like currently is Facebook and Instagram and, you know, certainly email and other platforms like that. But social communications happen on these very, predictable social networks with news feeds and comments and private messages and whatnot. And now I'm thinking this is going to be much more of a second life Fortnite, you know, Minecraft type environment where there's avatars involved and whatnot. And, and when I think about it that way, I think I, there's just too big of a leap there for a lot of people. Now the younger generations are probably going to you know, be totally adaptive with it. Yeah. But for, you know, the folks that are 35 and older, I think we're going to be scratching our heads like, what is the point of this? Yeah, I, I personally, when I when I put on those Oculus or things like that, or if I'm on a ride and it, everything's moving, I'll come out. I'm maybe one of the 30 percent. I don't know what the exact statistic is. I'm going to get nauseous. <laughs> so, not, for, not for me, but I know for my kids and, and, and their friends and, and I'm, I'm seeing more more people uh, get involved in this with those games that you're saying. However, um, I, I, it, it is the augmentation of reality and, and virtual and, and brands are getting involved there. And this this isn't going to go away. It, it, it's going to grow. I just don't know how quickly and technology is definitely going to get better. And we, we spoke before about this is, well, what's that gap going to be between the people who can and who, who don't? wish to participate or can't mm -hmm. even participate. And that yeah. could be some, some issues. Well, and for a software platform like TalkWalker, I mean, your, your primary role here is to kind of, you know, index and pull together the communications from these platforms and kind of the gorilla in the room for your, your industry over the last 15 years has been, you can't get on Facebook. It's a walled garden. You're not going to see most of those conversations. Um, you know, contrary to what most people think, Facebook actually protects individual consumer conversations from a lot of these listening platforms. In fact, my old company, when I, you know, branched out and tried to start the Conversation Research Institute a few years ago, we did some figuring based on the old Facebook topic data that was cut off from the world at that point. Um, but we projected that roughly 60 percent of all online conversations occurred behind the Facebook firewall. So two part question for you. I'll start with the first one. How do you currently account for that gap when trying to talk to a prospect to invest in social listening software? Right. And then what does that look like in the metaverse? Are we going to be able to index any of those conversations at all? So, so it's a great question. And when we talk Facebook, we're not only talking Facebook, we're talking Instagram and WhatsApp as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, anything that's public is access that TalkWalker can, can be able to, to monitor. 
with that being said, we are GDPR compliant, which mm -hmm. we take very seriously. Instagram is another area where we can monitor. So, so that's a good thing as well. Um, WhatsApp, that's closed. So uh, the metaverse, there may be certain communities that are closed, just like there's some medical communicate communities online out there that we just can't go into. And even though clients are asking us if we could, but no, that's not, that's not what we can do. Now, what we can do is we can take third party data and put it into uh, the platform and be able to do the same types of analytics with the AI to be able to give you some insight in, ter in terms of what's happening. I do think about how we are going to um, monitor conversations or actual um, actions or engagement with brands on the metaverse. Uh, the technology will eventually be there. We're not there just yet. Yeah. So I wonder if you know, the thinking behind, you know, a lot of these questions for me in, in platforms like TalkWalker that sort of pull data and information, I, I kind of insinuated in the show intro that, you know, social listening data can basically be turned into market research these days. And, you know, formerly you used to be able, you, you used to have to do focus groups and more often than not, they were, you know, 20 people that they bribed in Kansas City or some such place, or they would do intercept surveys of, you know, 200, 500, maybe even a thousand people. But the number of respondents in the old way of doing things, the old way of doing focus groups and whatnot pales in comparison to the fact that social listening software can identify and analyze hundreds of thousands or even millions of brand mentions. And, and I, I think what that prompts for me, the question that that prompts for me is, is our social listening platforms perhaps going to take the place of those higher cost avenues for consumer insights one day? It will make it more affordable and make it a little bit more of a level playing field for a small company to be able to do some type of market research. Mm -hmm. However, focus groups are not going to go away, in my opinion. We, we Focus groups can be in conjunction. They, they, can, they can go in deeper. Uh, you, you, you could be actually physically seeing people as well. So there, there's something to be said about that in terms of uh, the types of focus and research that you're doing. However, I, I do love the fact that using AI to be able to get all this information globally in 187 different languages and understand the sentiment of all of that. The, the AI is just so good and being able to really get accurate in terms of uh, tonality and, and understanding what, what's being said out there. And I'll, I'll just give you one, one case study without mentioning the company name. Uh, there was a uh, consumer beverage company that realized that 75% of the conversation that was going on for a certain time period was about an expiration date. So hmm. clearly there were supply chain issues. Um, there was need for replacing the product. It potentially damaged the reputation. Um, an increase in acquisition cost and trust was really important. So uh, what did they end up doing? Uh, send a coupon for non-expired product and you know, they had to work on that right away. If they waited around for a focus group, oh, yeah. let's fly them all in or let's 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 get someone you know, to get them all online and talk to them. And, you know, if three out of the 10 people said, oh, there's an issue going on with the expiration date, would they really know that there was a problem? Yeah, that's a good point. Well, and, and I think to 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 defend the you know focus group, the old way of doing research, if you want to call it the old way, it's still you know very relevant today. Yeah. One drawback to social listening versus focus groups is that your lack of control or direction as a brand. You can't ask the question. You're mining data that's already there, hoping to surface some insight like, hey, there's an expiration date issue, but you're not asking consumers what the problems are. You're actually just looking for you know, keywords that, and, and sentiment that might cluster a problem. So uh, yeah. I definitely agree with you that the focus groups aren't going away, that they're still very, uh, you know, relevant in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. And we have to take into consideration that phenomena of disinformation that's out there as well, mm -hmm. and that brands are really on top of this and, and struggling. It's almost like whack-a-mole. If they see some, <laughs> a, a bot or something that is, it's doing disinformation and damaging to a company, you know, there'll be the cease and desist or they have to call the platform up and say, Hey, uh, this isn't right. Or get their attorneys here and there. And, you know, you knock one down and another one pops up. So you just have to weigh the pros and cons. And if there's something with disinformation, but it only has one engagement, you know, really, is that a big deal? Yeah. 
That's true. Well, the future uh, with the the metaverse, the development of how the social listening you know platforms are going to respond to that and be able to account for it and all that. Certainly very interesting. Todd, I'm glad you and Talkwalker are here to help us navigate it all. Tell us where people can find you and Talkwalker on the interwebs. www.talkwalker.com. That's a, a great place to go. And you can find me at um, on Twitter at uh, Todd M. Grossman. Very good. Uh, I've also, by the way, copied and pasted your LinkedIn uh, uh, URL and, of course, the Talkwalker uh, URL over there in the comment section. We'll make sure those are in the show notes as well. Uh, Todd, thank you so much for the time and the insights today. We do appreciate the uh, partnership with Talkwalker here at Cornet, and I'm looking forward to another Bourbon Trail adventure with you very soon, sir. Absolutely. We'll be there. All right. Take care. Have that a good is holiday. That is, you have a good holiday too, Todd. That's Todd Grossman. He is the chief uh, uh, acquisition. What did I call him? What was his title? Let me see here. Let me scroll back up so I get it right because I don't want to mess that up again. Um, he is the chief adoption officer. I knew it started with an A. Uh, he's chief adoption officer at Talk Walker. Uh, great platform. We're able to uh, leverage that platform a bit here at Cornet and love doing so. So go check that out, talkwalker.com. Uh, good software for you to be looking at if you're looking into taking social listening to a different level in your business. All right, real quick, for those of you who are interested in influencer marketing, I've posted a review of a new state of social influence on Instagram report from the folks at Trend Hero over at jasonfalls.com. They did a, a really nice job of analyzing 7.5 million U.S. Instagram accounts and sussing out how many are celebrities, mega influencers, micro influencers, nano influencers. Then they cross-tabbed all that around gender, location, and more. Lots of engagement rate data by segment two, which allowed me to combine some influencer pay rate information from Influencer Marketing Hub and make a calculation of the average cost per thousand rate for micro influencers versus larger celebrity ones. The difference may surprise you, and we now have a quantifiable bit of data to know which is more effective for your influence marketing efforts. So if you jump over to jason.online slash hero report, you can see that article. I will drop that link also in the comments section, wherever you're watching the live stream. If you're listening after the fact, it'll be in the show notes, of course, as well. Uh, there's a big red button on that page when you get there at jason.online slash hero report. That'll take you, you can it'll enable you to download the full trend hero report for yourself. And so check that out at jason.online slash hero report. Um, and also too, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fumble around here. Now I don't need to show you this. I'll just tell you this. Um, we have an exciting event was announced this morning. Uh, for those of you who follow the influencer marketing world at all, you know, there's a big event that happens in London every year uh, called the influencer marketing show. Well, they finally announced they're bringing it to the United States. It will be in New York on April 27th. Uh, so if you go to influencermarketingshow.com, uh, you can now click on the New York event, April 27th. I I haven't even talked to them yet. I know I'm going to be there because if I just have to go as an attendee and I'm not involved in the show, then I'm going to go as an attendee because it's going to be a fantastic event. The one they do in London every year basically brings a who's who in influencer marketing from the agency and brand perspective. Some of the software providers are there as well. They all come together and have a really good day of di uh, digging deep into Influencer Marketing. So InfluencerMarketingShow.com is the URL. They're coming to New York April 27th, uh, hosted by Talking Influence, which is sort of the front face of the company that does uh, that show and a lot of content on the internet around influencer marketing as well. So April 27th, New York City. I will see you there. Put that on your calendars. Also, folks, don't forget there are now audio uh, exclusive episodes of Digging Deeper available only on the audio podcast subscription. Our first such episode is a report of our recent Black History Trivia Night event that I think you'll find quite informative and potentially inspirational as an activity for your business. We'll also be adding some interesting interviews like you see here on the live stream, but with folks either inside the walls of Cornette who deliver smart solutions to our clients or those who may not be able to join us for the live stream each Tuesday. To subscribe to the audio podcast, just visit cornette.online slash digging deeper or search for Digging Deeper Cornet wherever you get your podcasts. And that is going to bring us to the end of today's show. 
Uh, thanks to everyone who joined us on the interwebs today. Looks like everything ran smoothly over there. Saw plenty of people waving hi and uh, posting a few comments. So I appreciate you uh, digging in today with us here on Digging Deeper. And now we reach the point in the program where Jason has to push too many buttons and hopefully doesn't mess up getting us out of here. So there's one button, there's two button, and there's three buttons. So let's see if this will work. That'll do it for this edition of Digging Deeper. Make creativity your business advantage. If you like the episode, share it with a friend or colleague who might as well. Digging Deeper is a production of the Cornette Group. Find us online at teamcornette.com. Our executive producer is Christy Hyland. Creative director is Jason Jeske. Associate producer is Ashley Harris. Our theme music is composed by Rex Bass. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. Until next time, I'll see you on the interwebs. <laughs>